Hello scholars, welcome to today's Manuscript Spotlight. Today, we'll be looking at Codex Beze, which is different from the other manuscripts I've examined so far on this channel for several reasons. Most notably, this manuscript is the oldest extant example of an already rare type of manuscript, a Greek-Latin diglot, meaning that the text is recorded in both Greek and Latin. In this case, the Greek text is on the left side when the book is opened, and the corresponding Latin text is on the right side. If you're familiar with a Latin version of the Bible, it's probably with the Vulgate, a translation into Latin that is still used by the Roman Catholic Church, though it was produced by a commission around the same time that the Codex Beze was written. While they are both Latin translations, the Codex Beze records a more ancient version of the Old Latin translation that was in use around the 3rd century AD. This manuscript has been dated to around the beginning of the 5th century AD, and contains the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, as well as the Book of Acts and a fragment of 3rd John. This manuscript contains numerous unique readings and variations, some of which I'll be covering today. I think it's appropriate here to take a brief detour into the rabbit hole of textual criticism, which I have previously only slightly covered on this channel. New Testament scholars have developed a method of categorizing New Testament manuscripts based on their variations, and these categories are known as text types. The three primary text types are Alexandrian, Western, and Byzantine. Codex Beze belongs to the Western text type, which is an ancient textual tradition that is characterized by a relatively high frequency of scribal errors and free use of paraphrase. All the other Greek manuscripts I've read on this channel so far have been of the Alexandrian text type, which is the oldest and most well-regarded of the text types. Despite being the oldest, most Alexandrian manuscripts have only been rediscovered relatively recently, mostly within the past 200 years. Manuscripts that belong to this tradition were copied and transcribed within a tightly regulated scribal process, producing manuscripts that are now believed to be the closest to the original texts out of all the text types. As a result, nearly all modern Bible translations base their text off Alexandrian manuscripts. The Byzantine text type is the most recent of the primary text types, but comprises about 95% of all currently surviving Greek New Testament manuscripts. This text type is believed to contain the most changes and additions to the original texts. There are a minority of scholars who believe that the Byzantine text type is actually the most true to the original text, and survived in such large numbers because the supposedly variant Alexandrian and Western text types were rejected, but this stance is not widely accepted. In any case, the oldest English Bible translations, the Tyndale, Coverdale, Geneva, and King James Version, among others, were all based on Byzantine text type manuscripts because those were the only Greek manuscripts available at the time. With that background out of the way, let's return to our manuscript. Like I said, Codex Beze belongs to the Western text type, and has some unique features that aren't found in any other manuscripts. One of these that I found highly intriguing is a short story of Jesus interacting with a man who is working on the Sabbath, added after Luke 6.4. The Greek manuscript reads, Te aute hemera te asamanos tina ergazamanon to sabato, aipen auto, anthrope. Emen oidas ti poiais makarias e, e de me oidas epicataratas kai parabates e tonamo. Since this is a diglot codex, I'll also read the corresponding Latin translation of this portion. Eodem die widens quendam apparentem sabato, et dixit ili, homo, si quidem scis quod facis beatus es. Si autem nescis maledictus et trabaricator legis. For the English translation, I'll only be comparing the Greek as usual. Te aute hemera, on the same day. Te asamanas tina, seeing someone. Ergazamanon to sabato, working on the Sabbath. Ipen auto, he said to him. Anthrope, emen oidas, men, if you know, ti poiais, makarias e, what you do, blessed are you, e de me oidas, but if you do not know, 
epicatalatas kai parabates e. You are cursed and a transgressor, tonamo, of the law. This interesting passage seems to show Jesus encouraging a man to work on the Sabbath, given he has the proper motivation. While this story is intriguing, it is probably apocryphal since it hasn't been included in any other surviving manuscripts, and so shouldn't be given too much weight. In my opinion, this is the most interesting of the notable readings from Codex Beze, and nearly all the rest of the intentional changes appear to be made in an attempt to harmonize differences in wording between the four Gospels. For our final passage, I'll be reading from Acts 1.11, which is spoken by two angels immediately after Jesus ascends to heaven. The Greek text reads, Andres Galalaioi, ti estecate en blepontes ais ton uranon, utos ha Jesus ha analamphthais af humon, utos eleusetai han trapon etheasesthe auton preomenon ais ton uranon. In the Latin text of the same passage, Viri Galilei, qui stabas aspicientes in caelum, iste Jesus, qui ad sumptus est a wobis, sic enim vignet, quam ad modum vidistis eum euntem in caelum. Finally, for the English translation from Greek, Andres Galileoi, men of Galilee, Ti estecate, why do you stand? En blepontes ais ton uranon, looking into heaven. Utos ha Jesus, this Jesus, ha analamphthais af humon, who is taken up from you. Utos eleusetai, will come. Hantrapan etheasesthe auton, in the same way as you saw him, para iuomenon ais ton uranon, go into heaven. The rest of the book of Acts tells the story of how Jesus' disciples, encouraged by this glorious hope of Jesus' return and animated by the power of the Holy Spirit, traveled throughout the ancient Near East, spreading the good news of Jesus. I hope you've enjoyed reading this manuscript together, and that this week you also can be filled with the hope of Jesus' coming return and with the Holy Spirit. Please let me know if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you again on the next Manuscript Spotlight.